Taro House is probably one of my favorite maps by far, and one of the most popular maps for many Zero Hour players. It's one of the OG maps, it's well balanced, well designed, and very fun to play on. In this pro tip guide, I will share some of my favorite ways to defend objectives on Terror House. Some can be used solo without requiring any help, some would most definitely require one or two other players. Also, now that I won't be talking about attacking tactics in this video, I was thinking about combining everything into one video, but I think it's best to just focus on the defending side in this video, and then I will do another video to focus on the attacking side. So without further ado, let's get started. The first floor hall is by far one of the hardest, if not the hardest, objective locations to defend. Attackers have many ways to get in, lots of windows, and lots of opportunities for them to breach. The objective will be located in the hall room, and attackers can access this location from 2 to 3, maybe 4 access points, depending on the procedural prop placement setups that you get. Through the L-shaped corridor from the main door, through the double doors from the storage room number 1, through the kitchen if they got in from the window in the south side, and through the two single doors from the distribution room if they got in from the windows in the east side. Here are some really good spots that I like using to defend this objective location. Obviously the toilet room in the distribution room. This one, however, does not have a door, so you should be careful of attackers potentially throwing a frag grenade through the window from the outside on the east side. In the distribution room, you can use some of the props and hide behind them, especially if the procedural prop placement RNG is in your favor. You can hide in a way that you can actually get a good angle on the two windows facing east. You can also hide in the top left corner of the whole room, looking towards the kitchen and the double doors of the storage room. Depending on the procedural prop placement setups that you get, you can also have props there, which will make it easier for you to hide. Once again, depending on the procedural prop placement setup that you get, you can sometimes have props blocking the L-shaped corridor from the main entrance. Another one that is a little bit more offensive is if you hide in the storage room at the windows facing west, you can actually have a good angle on the main gate and see if someone is going for the main entrance or the breaker switch. This is a very, very good spot right there. I would most definitely not recommend hiding in the small toilet since it's quite easy for the attackers to throw a fry grenade in those rooms from the outside, something that new players actually do a lot. Obviously there can be also defenders waiting in other areas of the map, it's good to keep someone at the stairs keeping an eye on the breaker switch and you can also have someone in the first floor ready to jump down from the balcony to flank the attackers who might be trying to climb or maybe still trying to reach the breaker switch and they are still outside, so that's a valid tactic as well. In terms of gadgets, here's what I like to use on this objective location. Door traps on the main door or the double doors at the storage room can be pretty useful. Spy cameras in the hall room or the entrance corridor can also be pretty useful to see if attackers are pushing from the main entrance or the kitchen towards the objective. The second floor is a little bit easier to defend because there are a lot less options for attackers to breach. They can be coming from the main entrance of the flat or the balcony at the dining room. The objective can be located in two locations that are fairly easy to defend, in my opinion, without exposing yourself too much. Whether the objective is in the kids' room or the master bedroom, here are some of my favorite spots that you can use to defend them. In the kitchen room, obviously, however, the tactic that I use is that I always close the door and I break the handle of the door so that I can peek through and see if someone is pushing the whole room towards the objective from the dining room or the main entrance without exposing myself too much and I can even shoot through the hole of the door. Just keep in mind that the window behind you is not covered, so attackers could still potentially look through and see that you're there and they can definitely throw a frag grenade into this room. The master bedroom is obviously one of my favorite places to hide and defend from. You can either hide behind the first or the second door or even do both. It really depends on how many people want to use this tactic and how well your team works together. And what you can do here is that you can either break one of the doors from the outside and then get into the master bedroom from the other door and then hide behind the door you just broke and peek through the hole just like you did in the kitchen room to see what's going on in the whole room or the kids room. 
A tactic that is used by a lot of defenders is to keep one team member with easy access to the outside, someone who can step out and easily kill attackers who are climbing. The storage room on the ground floor is a pretty good location for that since you can easily step out and kill attackers climbing the north wall to the balcony or the windows. The front balcony at the stairs is also another good location to kill attackers climbing the east wall trying to look into the dining room. In terms of gadgets, I quite like using the following. The door wedges on the door at the main entrance or at the door for the kids room. That one would force the attackers to waste time and you can shoot through them if you're hiding behind the second door from the master bedroom. A spy camera in the hall room can be quite useful since it will always show you if there are attackers that are about to push one of the two objective locations. And door traps can be quite useful on this map as well. You can put one on the door of the kids room or on each door of the master bedroom. All of these can be quite useful to slow the attackers down. The third floor is quite similar to the second one in terms of core design. It pretty much offers the same access points with the balcony on the north side that leads to the hall room or the main entrance of the flat. The objective can be placed in the main office or the dining room. The dining room is probably the easiest for attackers to access since it's right next to the main entrance unless props are blocking the door, which can happen depending on the procedural prop placement setup that you get. And so here are some of my favorite spots and tactics to defend the third floor. Once again, in the kitchen where we break the handle of the door, which will give me a good view on the balcony door. So if someone tries to get in from the balcony, I can shoot them without exposing myself too much. That will slow them down or I will potentially get a kill. The window of that kitchen is also blocked, so it's much harder for the attackers to check the room from the outside. In the main office, where I usually break the door on the right side from the hole and then walk back in the main office through the other door. There is no real need to break both doors on this one since you would not get a good angle from the other door. You could also try to hide in the storage room right next to the dining room, but bear in mind that it's really easy for the attackers to throw a frag grenade in this room from the outside through the windows on the west side without exposing themselves too much. And that's why it's pretty good to keep team members in the stairs so that they could easily access the balcony on the west side and they could kill attackers who are climb the wall on the west side and throw grenades in that little storage room. The toilet at the main office is again a pretty good place to hide especially if you close the door and you have someone else breaking the handle for you. That way you can keep an eye on the objective without having to open the door and without exposing yourself too much. In terms of gadget, here's what I usually like to do. Door wedges are pretty fun to use on this floor. I usually block the main entrance or the door at the balcony. Both are great to block, especially if you're hiding in the kitchen or in the main office, just like I explained earlier. Spike MRs can be placed in the L-shaped corridor towards the door or on the foundation of the stairs so that you know if someone is about to breach the flat from the main entrance. You could also use this for the second floor. It works pretty well. The C4 charge can be quite useful if placed right above the main entrance, especially if someone is monitoring the spike MR and can tell you if someone is about to get in. So those are some of my pro tips to play better when defending on Terror House. Keep in mind that the procedural prop placement might make things slightly harder or easier depending on the setup you get and that communicating and coordinating with the rest of your team is still by far the best tactical tool you can use. A team that communicates as often as possible is most likely going to be the team that wins. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment below to let me know what sort of tactics or placements you actually like using on Terror House when defending. Liking, sharing and commenting on the video is honestly the best way to support me right now. We're also getting closer to uh, the 700 subscribers, so if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing to never miss any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.